This video will look at utility software. So what is utility software? Well, utility software are programs which provide some really useful functions such as keeping your system secure, keeping your storage dis disks organized, uh, maintaining the system. And we're now gonna have a look at some examples of utility software, which you need to know for your GCSE exam. So encryption software. We've talked about encryption software in previous videos, uh, but once again, it is where data is scrambled before being sent across a network so that if it's intercepted, it can't be read. And encryption software, what it will have is an encryption key, which will convert your data into um, a scrambled form. So it'll convert plain text into ciphertext. So an encryption key is an algorithm. It systematically alters each piece of data in a file. Uh, for example, a key may convert each character in a text file to the next letter in the alphabet, for example. So here's an example where hello becomes IFMMP. So for the ciphertext to be converted back to plain text, the same key is required by the recipient to reverse the encryption. So it's just the re reverse of what has happened to actually scramble the data in the first place. Formatting software is another type of utility software. Now formatting will um, prepare your hard disk or storage device for data storage. It creates sectors and tracks on where data can be stored and it creates a list called the file allocation table. And this file allocation table is used to keep track of where data is um, written on the hard disk. So every time you write any data onto your hard disk, the table's updated with the location of where that data is stored. Now you may well have heard of situations where people have thought they've deleted data by formatting their hard drive only for that data to be recovered. Now, the reason for that is that when you format a hard drive, you're not actually deleting the data, you're simply deleting the file allocation table. So the computer can't actually locate the data and therefore thinks that the hard disk or storage device is empty. But in fact, that data remains. So certain software can actually um, recover that data. Defragmentation software is another utility that you need to be aware of. Now, every time you store data on your hard disk for example um, that data might not actually be stored um, together in memory um, remember that we talked about a, a hard disk being formatted where sectors are created now these sectors are tiny really really small so every file will be split up into little bite-sized pieces and over time, these little pieces, these building blocks of a file get fragmented over the hard disk. So every time you try and your computer tries to read that file, it may take longer because it's got to search multiple places of the hard drive to uh, retrieve and read that data. So to improve read speeds, defragmentation software will search for all the related data for a particular file and reorganize them so they become physically next to each other on the disk. So therefore, we can uh, the computer can read the data much faster. So here's an example. You've got file one to six of different colors. The files are split up into these different building blocks and they are positioned where there's space in the hard drive, um, but not necessarily next to each other. After defragmentation, all of the uh, files data is then stored next to each other, physically next to each other, so it's easier to uh, for the computer to read it and therefore performance can increase. Data compression software is another utility. So data compression software is where uh, a file is reduced in size. And there's different reasons why you might want to reduce uh, the file size of a file. Uh, less storage space required is the obvious one. Uh, you might want to then uh, be able to send it to somebody else so if they can download it faster that can improve their online experience um, or it might be about streaming um, files um, so that they can be um, again downloaded onto another computer much faster and there's two ways in which you can compress software one of them is lossy compression so this is where unrequired data is removed so if you consider an mp3 Certain sound frequencies aren't really um, heard by humans, however they may be recorded. So once you've recorded some sound, if you were to delete those frequencies that we wouldn't notice, 
then we'd be reducing the data of the file but not impairing the sound quality. And that's an example of lossy compression where you remove data from a file. Lossless compression is another example and this is where you are temporarily removing data from the file but then adding it back when it needs to be used. And zip files are a good example of this type of compression. When you zip your file up you will reduce the size of the file but then you can later unzip it and reuse the files once again. And backup software is another a good example of utility software. Unsurprisingly, backing up backup software will allow you to back up your data, and it's where a copy of your data is made and stored somewhere else. And it's really important that we back up data so that in the event of data loss, perhaps through one of the threats that we looked at in the, uh, a few videos back, the data can then be recovered. Um, and you know, it's backing up data is more and more important the larger the company. I mean, consider a large online store deleting their database and not being able to uh, recover it. The company would completely fail. And there's two ways in which you can back up software. Um, we could do a full backup uh, or an incremental backup. So with a full backup, this software will make a copy of all the files on the system and doing that each day might take a long time but recovering the data is quick because you've got all the data stored together so it can be quickly reloaded back onto the system. Incremental backups is where you are backing up the files that have changed since the last backup. So instead of a full backup each day you might just back up um, fully once a week and just do incremental backups um, all the other days. So it's much quicker to run the backup but Unfortunately, it takes a lot longer to then try and um, recover that data and reload it back onto the system because you've got lots of different backups that need to be done incrementally. But it is good because it leaves an audit trail of the files that have changed.